All right, so I gave you about a half hour. Hopefully, uh, we're on the same page. Now, yesterday we we rushed into uh, chapter thirteen. So now that we've arrived at chapter thirteen, we have to remember to stay uh, focused and remember that is as much of this that needs to be conveyed as quickly as we can. We can't kill ourselves in the process. So let's just uh, go at a, our pace and we'll get through it. Creating a wall core. Creating a wall core. Hopefully you have your coffee. I'm on my second cup. We're in a plan view, architectural template with a view discipline of architectural. One of the unique functions of a basic wall is its ability to identify a core. The wall core is more than a layer of material. In fact, it can comprise several material layers. It defines the structural part of the wall and influences the behavior of the wall and how it interacts with other elements in the model. The core boundaries are references to which you can dimension or constrain sketch lines. When you use the pick wall selection option, for floors, ceilings, or roofs. The example shown in figure 13.7 illustrates a sample floor in sketch mode where the outer core boundary of the wall was selected using the picked walls method. The core boundaries of the wall are shown as dashed lines for clarity. Well, they drew it in the book they don't give us an example. I'm going to have to demonstrate it for you. I'm going to need to sketch a, a floor bounded by edges. So, let's do that. I'd like for you to demonstrate some patience. Architecture, floor, Core boundary. Okay. Well, there's our generic twelve inch floor, which is awfully thick. Okay. So now, it's defined by the core boundary. And I didn't take the time to show the core boundary as hidden lines for you. But, it doesn't mean I can't show you that. We discussed this yesterday. core boundary structure right here. So, as you can see, the wall extends to the outer boundary of the core. Now, let's take a look at this wall and floor and see what we got before we move on to the next paragraph. I'm going to draw a section. I go into view, section. I'm going to take a look at this in section.
Well, as you can see, the view created, detail level defaulted to course. Within the view control bar, or in the view properties dialog box, we change that to medium. Now, let's get this into perspective here. And I'm a righty, I'm not ambidextrous. I'm a righty, not a, a, a lefty. And that makes a big difference to me. And sometimes it's difficult to get it where you want. There it is. I'm a righty, not a lefty. Okay, so with these uh, views tiled, you can see this corrugated deck into the core boundary. Now, Right off the bat, you can see that it didn't cut. It extended to the core boundary, but it didn't cut out the core boundary, nor did it cut out the finish layers or the thermal layers, nor did we get uh, a message asking us to do just that. Now, I suspect it's because of what I doctored up prior to making the video. So I'm going to stop that and undo it for a second. I'm going to undo the floor. And I'm going to go back to my elevation view. And bring this floor back up to the level one. Okay, now, when floors generated with the pick walls method intersect walls that were picked during sketch mode, you will receive a prompt to automatically join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the wall. And we didn't get that. So we do that again. Floors generated with the pick walls method the pick walls method. Pick walls. I picked lines. Pick walls method. Add sketch lines based on existing walls. Sketch lines created using this tool automatically constrained to the walls. To select a chain of walls, move the cursor over the wall, press tab to highlight the entire chain. Click OK. Now, doesn't demonstrate that way. It doesn't show us four walls. It, make, it doesn't want to make it easy on us. Because it could be a lot easier to draw a floor when you uh, have all four walls. And you'll see what I mean in a second. Well, when you have all four walls, it's a lot easier to draw a wall on a floor. You just pick the walls and you get your floor and that's that's pretty easy to do it that way it's not asking us to do it that way it's asking us to pick a wall and sketch the remainder of the wall so floor pick a wall and then sketch the remainder And as a matter of fact, it doesn't even give us the luxury of starting at the end of the wall. It almost gives us a pad. Now this might not be acceptable. I may have to doctor this by dragging these pick lines down to the endpoints or the vertex at these 90 degree angles 
or it won't accept it because it's not considered a closed loop or a closed boundary. But it did in this case. But I didn't get the message. I didn't get the message to extend it through the cutting plane. And, and that is going to cause us to have to diagnose and find a solution as to why. I told you, you're going to have to demonstrate patience. Now, it extended it, but it didn't cut the wall. Well, well because it's under it. Now, the next detail, figure 13.8, illustrates what it is that it wants to convey to you. But it doesn't show you how to do it. It assumes you know. It assumes you know. Now, I'm going to read it again. The example shown in figure 13.7 illustrates a sample floor in sketch mode where the outer core boundary of the wall was selected using the pick walls method. The core boundaries of the wall are shown as dash lines for clarity. When floors generated with the pick walls method intersect walls that were picked during sketch mode, you will receive a prompt to automatically join the geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the wall. Well, it says where pick walls method intersect the walls. They don't intersect. This floor does not intersect this wall. <coughs> it's its end, its edge, its slab edge is parallel to the core, but it doesn't intersect it. So, what's the solution? Well, we're going to delete it for starters. And we have this option here. If you notice, the thickness of the floor was drawn in the negative direction, in the negative Z direction, if you're in plan. <laughs> the negative Z, or in this case, the negative Y, if we're thinking orthographically negative thickness of the floor in this direction. We could change that. We could even tell the floor to maybe start at level two, and then we'll be able to uh, see if that box pops up. So let's, let's do it both ways, because this is a perfect opportunity to demonstrate the floor command, which they're not going to talk about for a while. <laughs> it's almost the next, but it almost expects you to know it. So let's just keep that uh, in mind when we draw this floor. So now, again, I'm not going to go, I'll, I'll be right said Fred for a few minutes, but my cigarette went out. And when I wake up, I like to have my coffee and my cigarette. I may have to work on a construction trailer. I don't know if I can go up to the 54th floor again, because I, it'll take me an hour to have a cigarette. I heard they're going to make you go up in an elevator one person at a time in Manhattan. <laughs> wow. I don't think I'm ever going to see a social security check. So we'll have to work. Am I working yet? Am I working yet? I think I am. I'm working. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm working now. Okay, I'm good. I'm working. I wasn't, but I'm all right. Are you working? Now, architecture. Floor. Architectural. Pick walls. Now, let's just look before we do that. Level, level one. Height offset from level, right? Height offset from level. Well, this is going to be a 12-inch floor. I can offset this 12 inches if I want. So that the bottom of the, wall, the, bottom of the floor is flush with the bottom of the wall, right? So that the bottom of the floor is flush with the wall. Let's see if that'll do it. The floor slash roof overlaps the highlighted walls. Would you like to join geometry and cut the overlapping volume out of the walls? Absolutely. Of 
course, of course I'd like to cut the overlapping volume out of the walls. Well, let's see. Well, now that's more along the lines of, of what it is that figure 13.8 shows, except that um, in elevation, this wall extends below level one. And that's a little bit of a trip up that the book throws your way. So, again, this in figure 13.8 is actually there. If you'll see the, the book, that's where the wall is. And of course, in the section, of course it's set to course. But that's all you get. So you'll have to figure out that solution. And uh, I figured it out for us. And I think I want to just give this a little quick stop. Because I want you to just take a little bit of time this morning to practice that. Because we're going to be getting into layer wrapping. So I'll read through the next paragraph. And then we're going to stop. And then you can, well, before we get into layer wrapping, um, which is important, uh, you'll have an opportunity to, to, to take a, a, a quick... Um, skim through it and acclimate yourself with those commands. Now, I got to turn this commercial off because I was I was listening to Metallica. So I got I'm multitasking. So if you click yes to this message and examine the intersection of the wall and floor in a section view, you will see the result of the joined elements. Note that you can get the joining prompt to appear again simply by clicking the floor, clicking the edit boundary button, in the ribbon, and then clicking finish edit mode, green checkmark icon, in any portion of the selected floor and related walls, if any portion of the selected floor and related walls still overlap, but are not joined, the prompt will be displayed. So um, you can experiment with that. Uh, we're going to move on to uh, creating layer wrapping. Um, and then we're going to continue on um, with a, uh, a downloadable uh, exercise, which will be the Chapter 13 Wall Wrapping RVT file from the publisher's website. So uh, we already know what that is. Uh, get, get over to uh, Mastering River 2008 Cybex. Um, and you'll be able to download the entire exercise files for this volume. So let's just, um, let's just hold that thought, okay? More coffee.